Now, we've seen some vile chat logs, crazy confrontations, and wild arrests on the show. But here's a look at some of the most shocking moments from the show. Well, how about we start with this dude right here? So he's making the turn. He's ner nervous. He's a brother. Let's call out. Call out. Hey, come on in! This nervous wreck walking up to the house is Elias Balon. But one call from the decoy and the dude could be extroverted with the rest of them. A small business owner. He's been chatting online with a girl posing as a 14-year-old named Lainey. Well, looks like he finally found the confidence to make it after all. But this is where things start getting real juicy. She asks him if he'll bring her vodka and let her drive his car. Yeah, now this was a problem in its own right. I mean, if having inappropriate conversations with someone so young wasn't already enough, this little issue here could land him in some serious trouble. But, well, did it deter our man from his mission? Of course not. Wouldn't be here talking about him if it did. Hot, he types. You hot mommy, let's make love. Okay, okay, hold it right there. Who do you think she is, huh? I mean, that's not how you address someone you barely know, and especially someone who's barely in high school. But guess what? You haven't even heard the worst part yet. He drove two and a half hours to get here. It's just before one o'clock in the morning. Yeah, shocking, isn't it? If only creeps like him showed this level of dedication towards things that really mattered, the world would be a safer place. Like seriously, while everyone is trying to get some good rest and recharge for the following day, this dude was on the hunt at 1 freaking AM. Quick, because I got chocolate on it. Just take a seat, I'll be right there. I made you some cookies, did you bring me my drinks? But well, this dude wasn't as dumb as the others. Yeah, Elias had a bad feeling about it. He kind of sensed something fishy going on. But before he made his next move, Chris decided that giving him a chance to make a decision wasn't the best play. I just gotta change. Why don't you do me a favor and come on in. Will you bring your stuff in? There it is. The guilty face of the century. Elias knew he was screwed because there was no way he was going to explain his way out of the mess. It's not easy to come up with an excuse on the spot, but let's see how creative he'll get, shall we? Well, I hope it's better than John's excuse because seriously, I'm sick and tired of the hanging out crap. Like, at least try to be a little original. Still, has. But look, this dude probably went shopping before making it to the house. Check out what he brought along. Yes, sir. You did. Why don't you put those on the table? No, sir, I carried them. Oh, yeah. Elias was really prepared for the best night of his life. Right from the roses to the booze, to what else? Of course, rubber. That's right, this dude was planning on having the greatest night ever, but what he ended with was a nine month long jail sentence. Yeah, that might seem like a lot more than what most creeps landed, but once you look at his chat logs, you'll know that he deserved at least 10 times more. Plus, right in the midst of the confrontation, he decided to let in on a little secret. I knew if something would happen like this, I would get in trouble because I'm married. Yeah, this dude was really playing with fire here. And of course, he stayed true to being as creepy as humanly possible and missed out on revealing this important detail during the chats. You're married. <laughs> yes, sir. That's not what you said in the chat. No, no, I didn't. And nope, he doesn't even look like he was sorry about it. He was just laughing it off, as if that would somehow make the situation any better. And don't even get me started on his excuses. But I really love her. The thing is that the things that we don't get along sometimes. Okay, so just because you and your wife don't get along, does that make any of what you're doing legal? Ah, if only. I mean, here's the fix you need. Either address the issues directly with your wife and sort things out and move on like mature people do every day. Why would you deliberately ruin someone else's life over it? But that was the last thing Elias was concerned about at the moment. She will kill me. I don't want to think about it. She will kill me. But what he said next practically gave me a headache. Oh, her dad has 10 brothers. 10 brothers. They will kill me. I mean, how can you so confidently think you can pull something like this off? 
while having so many people who are ready to take matters into their own hands. I mean, this dude was readily shooting himself in the foot here. But after all that drama, the dude was nowhere to be seen. Gone for good. In fact, some people aren't even hopeful if he is still alive. I mean, these are all just assumptions. But according to this update, Elias' wife clearly didn't wait for too long to file for divorce. But this is where things take a huge turn, and you wouldn't be able to guess what Elias did. Now, here's a look at Elias's probation paper, and according to this, apparently Elias left the country to go back home to Ecuador. And, nope, he didn't do this out of any, you know, goodwill or remorse. He pulled a sneaky move and fled without even informing his probation officer about it. Well, I guess you know what that means for him. The dude would never be able to set foot back in the States and roam as a free man. And it technically makes him an international criminal too. But well, that's a decision he made for himself. He decided to abandon his wife, his child, and his home to seek refuge elsewhere. All because he couldn't keep his urges to himself or better yet, get some damn therapy. Yeah, not the greatest vision he had for himself, I'm sure. But this next guy came up with one of the wackiest ways of making out. See, when Farzad first started his conversation with the decoy, he didn't seem like a total creep, just someone who was probably looking to chat to pass the time. But we wouldn't be here if that was the case. I mean, I've never actually seen a guy who was so excited to go buy protection. And, well, he couldn't even keep it together in general either he literally dashed towards the sting house to get things started. Wanna get a drink? But of course, he couldn't get a grip over his emotions. The dude was so restless that he wanted to pounce on the decoy as soon he got inside. Nice to meet you. Hi. But what he did next was actually kind of scary, as in, the crew were quite taken aback by what happened. I really like Hi, you. nice to meet you, how are you? I mean, he actually had the nerve to go in for a kiss. And you have to appreciate how the decoy managed to handle the situation. Wanna get a drink? However, the crew couldn't risk having the decoy around him anymore. Before Farzad could do anything else, Chris decided to step in and give him a piece of his mind. How old is the girl you were coming to see? This dude knew exactly what he was getting himself into. To me, it almost looked like he was a seasoned creep. He's 14. 14, yeah. That's not what she told you on the internet, though. And well, of course he had to lie about the age. It's almost like some of these morons have a handbook of excuses ready at all times. But Chris wasn't having it. When Chris started reading out from the chat logs, Farzad almost looked unbothered. You said 14, she says right here 12. Oh, yeah. And when nothing was working out for him, he came up with one of the most absurd explanation for his presence. You need a study, you need a good education. You came here to tell her that she should yes. be studying. Yes. Really, dude? That's the best you could come up with? Studying? Really? Yeah. But you also seem to indicate in this chat that the education you wanted to give her... Okay, now... That's the most unconvincing excuse I've ever heard. I mean, who was he trying to fool here? Rian. Yeah. Oh, come on. We've all seen the chats. And I couldn't find anything even remotely connected to studying anywhere. Well, maybe anatomy, I guess. But well, Chris knew exactly how to back him up the corner. It was sex education. But Farsad was better equipped with words than most other creeps we've seen on the show. No. No? Lies, lies, and more lies. Had it been for any other person confronting him, he could have easily swayed their opinion about him. But Chris knew better. Did you forget what you talked about? Chris decided to refresh Farzad's memory by reading his chats to him. But do you think the dude would accept? Only once that I could see in this transcript did you talk about the importance of education no. and... Yeah, talk about being delusional. I mean, bro, 
there's evidence staring right into your face and you have the audacity to deny it? Well, this bozo surely knew how to piss Chris off. I Virtually everything else. Yeah, Chris was trying to hold himself together. Farzad was truly testing his patience with every word that he spoke. But how much longer would he be able to hold himself? Talks about taking a shower with him. Yeah, I can almost hear him say it wasn't me. But Chris wasn't the one to back down. He decided to pull himself together and set the bozo straight. That's what you're saying. That's okay, what you say you want to do. Good. Yeah, as absurd as it sounds, this dude could somehow connect the dots between not knowing a certain language and being a total freak. Sorry, bro. A rule is a rule for every fool, regardless of knowing the language or not. You know, I now speak with you. I'm Austrian. Anyway, Farzad found himself safe and sound in the slammer. But fast forward to today, and the dude seems to be off the internet and out of the limelight. My mistake, but I don't like this. Your mistake. Do. Colin Tari tells me this is the first time he's had a chat with an underage girl. However, there were a few rumors that surfaced after his probation period. Apparently, Farzad decided to flee to Austria, where he didn't have to speak English. But I point out to him that according to perverted justice, he had a sexually charged chat less than two weeks earlier. Okay, so for someone who claimed to not know the language, how is that his chat logs were straightforward and downright disgusting? I'm pretty sure it went down before Google Translate, like, didn't completely suck. You know what that means? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Either way, this dude thought he could get away with these stupid excuses. But obviously, that's not what happened. My mistake, but I don't like this. Your mistake. Do. I mean, there's no way he could pass this off as a mistake. Anyway, some people speculate that this LinkedIn profile might belong to him. But when you see his education qualifications, the age doesn't really add up. According to LinkedIn, Farzad did his bachelor's degree back in 2014, which doesn't make sense given that the dude who showed up was born in 1976. Even though there are dudes who change their lives for the better, I personally don't feel Farzad was capable of doing that. But hey, credit where it's due. The dude was a classy liar. You have in your car. But of course, Chris and crew have seen too many creeps to fall for his act. And with that, Farsad was arrested and taken to prison, the one place where he actually belonged. Okay, fine. I'm Chris Hansen. But let's hope that the last guy on our list has a better excuse or is actually doing something better with his life. Want to get a drink? Here, you want to just go check out the beach first? Yeah, sure. All right. So this dude, Gregory Stewart, decided to strike up a conversation full of explicit stuff, like it was the chillest thing in the world. This is 44-year-old Gregory Stewart. And once he got the go-ahead, the dude got all charged up to show up. Screen name, who's your daddy, NJ. With such a generic username, I'm even surprised women bothered talking to him in the first place guess the decoy was the only one who gave him the time of day. Anyway, let's see what this freak is up to. He's a credit and collections consultant who drove an hour and a half to get here. Yep, you heard that right. Gregory was really excited to meet the decoy that he didn't mind going the distance to make it happen. And boy would he. The dude had everything planned out. Like how he was going to make the decoy feel and stuff like that. He planned on taking. Hmm, once we're naked in bed, we can do all kinds of stuff. Well, sadly, Gregory never got to show his skills. Oh well. Anyway, just when you thought he couldn't get more disgusting, he said this. Really? What kind of stuff? Rub our bodies together and feel how excited each other are. No doubt, this dude was totally messed up. Faster than he should be, I turn around and he's like running up the dune. To say that Gregory was excited would be a huge understatement, because just take a look at how he dashed towards the decoy. It looked like he was going to start chasing me. I think we're literally dealing with obsession here. What kind of consulting is going on today? Ah, what a disappointment. The dude couldn't believe Chris's timing. 
just when he started to talk about his love for good old protection, Chris decided to cut in. And what followed next was a range of excuses, starting with this. Nothing, I just came down to hang out, that's all. Just um, to hang out. You know, if you wanted to blow up some balloons, the stuff at the party store is way cheaper. I mean, seriously, can at least one of you morons be truthful for a change? Yeah, I'm not gonna do anything, I'll leave right now. Either way, this bozo would soon pay the price for his actions. No, sir, I mean, never- No! Meanwhile, Chris was struggling to stay calm in the face of this absolute tool. Explain to me how religious that is. I know, there's something wrong. And when nothing worked out, Gregory decided to plead his case. I mean, literally. Here's the part where I, I tell him I'm Chris Hansen with Dateline NBC Chris and give him a chance to Dateline respond. NBC. Wait, can someone remind him about the juicy words he used in the chat, please? But Gregory wasn't done yet. He tried to take another route altogether. All right, maybe I have a problem. Maybe I need to go, get, go see a psychiatrist to get counseling. I'm a very lonely guy. I don't have a girlfriend. A psychiatrist? Sorry, man, but I think you're too far gone for that because I don't think anyone would come up with what he said next. If please, if you let me go, I swear you can have the, the pizza, whatever. Yeah, he really tried to persuade Chris into letting him go in return for a pizza. I mean, this is hilarious. And I don't think anyone, not even the notorious Jeff Sokol matches up to this. And when even the pizza bait didn't work, he decided to look up to God. Knew you could get in trouble for this, right? I know, I you know. know. it's illegal, right? Yes, I, I, I know. I'm a very religious person. And then came another excuse. Wow, give me a break, man. Family person, I'm very close to my family. My mother's very sick. Obviously, things didn't go his way. And in the end, Gregory got what he deserved. Get down, get down, get down. Get down. Get down. Um, face down, face down, face down, face down. Hands behind your back. All right, so now, Time for a quick update. So, apparently Chris decided to get in touch with Gregory to feature on his podcast, and it turns out the two of them had a rather long conversation. What's more, Chris even mentioned how Gregory was clean and was actually staying out of trouble with the law. Also, when asked to participate in the interview, Gregory gave a positive response to Chris and told him that he would get back to him soon. Well, I don't think we have to wait for long to hear from him. And going by his recent pictures, I guess, he's surely moved on for the better. But you know what? That spin-off Chris came up with after TCAP ended is just as insane. You won't believe who we profiled tonight and what he did. Yeah, Chris has surely busted some of the most odd and creepy people in American history. Predator investigation. As you know, we were undercover in Michigan with the Genesee County Sheriff's Department. But this dude is the creepiest of the lot. I know I've said that more than once, but trust me, this dude is next level. Now, this creep you are looking at didn't require much effort to be lured in. In fact, he was more than willing to show up at the Sting House all by himself. The decoy says, you okay with younger girls? Now, the decoy was pretty clear about her age going into it. How old are you? 14, I'll be 15 Christmas. Had to lie to post the ad. She mentioned that pesky little number to him time and again that she just wasn't someone he should be hooking up with. But since he wouldn't believe her, she decided to share a bunch of pictures to prove her point. But, you know, I think that was what he was actually here for. So Michael was quite taken with her. The decoy looked so naive, so innocent. He just couldn't stop thinking about all the things he could do to her. After the decoy sends Lot a photo, he's anxious to meet. With his thoughts running wild, the dude decided to hatch a plan, and only a few moments later, he showed up at the sting house. Michael didn't even stop to think about the consequences of his actions. What if someone caught them red-handed? What if the decoy wasn't someone she claimed to be? Or even worse, what if the decoy was a cop? Michael was so blinded by his intentions that he headed straight to the house, beaming with excitement. 
But I think you already know what waited for him on the other side of the door. Michael was in for a shock, though. And he was shocked enough to share with the whole class. While he expected a pretty young woman to open the door and maybe welcome him into her arms, what happened instead was in complete contrast to his imagination. Well, yes, he was pulled in, but not quite to plan. You're good, bud. You're good. This one's nice. They lay down right here. They lay down right here. What's your name? The dude couldn't figure out what was going on for what felt like eternity. Meanwhile, the cops got busy slapping the cuffs on him, and then, and only then, did it finally dawn on him. Maybe he should have stayed in tonight. Good work. Hey, what's Mike. your name? Mike. Mike? Yeah. I'm Jason. You're gonna be all right, okay? You got ink in your pockets. It's gonna hurt me. Well, if you ask me, this is where TCAP has the edge over takedown. Where is this as a priority for this department? I think public service uh, for law enforcement, there, uh, there's a number of number ones, whether it's answering those calls, doing solid investigations, and this proactive policing. The reason we have such a focus on human trafficking is because it's the fastest growing criminal enterprise on the planet. Back then, the creeps would first meet the decoy before Chris came into the picture. After a brief chit chat, after the decoy would receive a cue from the crew to withdraw, they would often make some excuses to try and get out of there, to get more sweet tea, or maybe perhaps change into a new outfit, wink wink. And this is when Chris would make his iconic entry. Some of the reactions to his entrance were insane. He's read his rights. And then I get a chance to ask him questions. How's it going? Yeah. I'm going to have you move over to that back right there. Yeah, just turn back around and look that way. Yeah. Since Chris was armed with nothing but the chat logs, there was a high risk factor involved for the crew as well. The level of uncertainty was very high with the creeps free to do really whatever they wanted. It was only after Chris had his fill that he would let them loose and into the hands of the cops. However, Chris had to change the format of the show with time. It was way too risky to let the creeps move around freely before making the arrest. So, when the crew returned with a new team, they decided to change things up. This time around, instead of Chris, the cops decided to greet the creeps. And once they were secured in cuffs, Chris would take over. And despite all the time that had passed, the man never lost his flair. What was your plan here? Given that more creeps were lined up to visit the sting house almost immediately after the last, Chris wasn't about to waste any time. Right off the bat, he started to fire questions at Michael. However, the dude seemed too stunned to speak. Yeah, I didn't really know because I thought this was what this was. While he did make an attempt to speak, it was hard to follow what he was trying to say. And only after Chris made his position clear that Michael finally managed to get a grip of the situation. You thought, what was this? What? Uh, like a sting man. A sting man. However, his confidence has long since left the building. Michael started to fumble as he desperately tried to cook up lies in his defense. However, Chris wasn't about to buy anything he was selling. Well, she, in the ad thing says so she was 19 and then now, Michael had succeeded in manipulating the decoy into sharing her pictures. However, he was foolish to try the same tactics with Chris. Yes, the dude actually tried to sweet talk his way out of trouble, but it wasn't the whole truth. Although the decoy had to fake her age to be in the adult chat room, it, or more accurately, used her real age and then immediately adopted a younger one for the purposes of the sting, Michael didn't want to bring that little detail up, but Chris decided to remind him of it. You're gonna turn 14. Yeah, yes. what she said was she was gonna be 15 in December, but she's 14. Chris, yeah, that's right. And then I was like, mm, something just not, don't sound right. As Chris continued to press him with questions, Michael started behaving like an introvert. Suddenly, he found himself at a loss for words, unsure of how to deal with the situation. I didn't hear anyway. I was just gonna check. You were just going to chat. Yeah. So here's the thing. Although Chris returned with a new show, 
with a new name and a new crew and format, there is one thing that remained the same. The excuses. And not just any excuses, but a grab bag of only the lamest and most tired excuses we all know and maybe only sort of love. You're on your way to Home Depot. What were you gonna do at Home Depot? I pay. Okay, now how many times have you heard that before? I mean, we've heard creeps saying they just wanted to hang out or spend some time watching TV. But things with this dude were different. I mean, what's with all those containers of paint? What were you planning to do with them? You're on your way to Home Depot. Yeah. What were you gonna do at Home Depot? Buy paint. Buy paint. Yeah. And so on the way to Home Depot to buy paint, you decided to pop in and have sex with a 14-year-old girl. That wasn't have sex. Well, of course, none of it made sense. You weren't gonna have sex with her. I have heard no less than a hundred times, probably three hundred times in reality. I didn't mean it, I wasn't going to do anything, I'm going to get help, I just was here to check on her, I wanted to see if it was real, I was going to tell her parents, it's all. Which is why Chris decided to cross-question him once again. B.S. What were you going to do? Well, I was going to see how old she actually was, if she was... And his reply? Well, check it out yourselves. I was going to ask her for proof when I got here. See, she had a license or whatever. She didn't have a license. And she was really 15, I was going to bounce. But you were gonna bounce. she was older than 18. Oh, looks like the dude just turned detective. I mean, what kind of an excuse was that? Either way, right in the midst of it, he ended up blurting something that caught Chris's attention. I was probably going to ask because she said she squirted it. I've never seen it before. I was going to ask her to see if I could see it. Squirted? What do you mean by squirted? Oh. There's no way on earth Chris would believe that. So you thought, well, on the way to Home Depot, why not stop and see this girl perform this sexual act? Right. And what were you supposed to be painting today? The outside of my house. I got, you can, I don't remember my clothes, but. The outside of your house? Yeah, you got. What color were you gonna paint it? Uh, graphite, charcoal. Graphite, charcoal. And you're the homeowner? Yeah. I mean, let's not forget about his profession here. Okay, honey, I'm going to the Home Depot to get graphite gray paint to paint the house. You take care of the three kids. Oh, wait, on the way, I'm going to stop by and see a 14-year-old girl to have sex or watch her perform a sex act. Who does that? Wait, did I forget to mention what he did for a living? Well, hear it for yourselves. 32 years old and a corrections officer in a state prison. You know, a lawman in his own right. Yeah. And this is what he was doing in his free time? Looking for different ways to get into those same prison cells he guarded all day long. If you can't tell right from wrong after monitoring inmates all day, every day, 40 plus hours a week, then what other example do you need to stay straight? And yet this guy does it anyway? What else has he done? What would he have done in addition to this had he not been caught? That's the fear. I mean, after spending days watching inmates suffer the consequences of their actions, I wonder how this man couldn't learn a thing from it. It was almost like he was blind to everything except his dirty plans. What's even more concerning is when a person who is expected to uphold the law decides to break it. But that is just the beginning of this twisted story. Do you live with anybody else? My wife and kids. Your wife and kids. And how old are your children? Uh, ten. No, nine, six, and nine, seven, and eight. Uh, nine, seven, nine, seven, five, and seven. Turns out, Michael had three little children of his own. And yet, he had no problem chatting up with someone who might as well be as old as his own kid. But wait till you hear what came up next. Believe me, you are not ready for this. So your oldest is five years older than the girl you were going to come see here today. And that was pretty much the end of him. Until Chris mentioned it to him, Michael remained oblivious to the fact. Correct? Right. And you're okay with that? No. I was really going to ask her to see her ID. Because if you read it, obviously you read the text messages, I asked for proof of her age. You did? Yes. And I'm sure he knows the kind of treatment prison guards get by inmates. They don't exactly share a lot of love with each other, if you get what I mean. But, well, Michael decided to play with fire, and he was sure to get himself burnt. And what do you think your wife is going to say about this? Would I be happy? 
wouldn't be happy. Just like this next guy who came up with a crazy reason to explain his presence in the house. So here we have our police officers waiting for the next guy to show up at the house. Hurry up! Come on! You would just get in here. And get this, they were waiting for a single dad who was seconds away from making the worst mistake of his life. As soon as Thomas walked into the trap, the cops were ready to nab him. And despite the initial resistance, the cops were cops, after all. So that wasn't gonna stop them. At first, Thomas looked visibly confused. But with time, the gravity of the situation started to sink in. As Thomas was cuffed, Chris decided to step in to do what he does best. Hey, how are you? Good, how are you? Good. What's happening tonight? But somehow, Thomas managed to keep his cool at first. While Chris continued to grill him, the dude looked almost unbothered by the situation. Despite that, though, his excuses weren't much better from the garden variety. Being stupid. Being stupid. What do you mean by being stupid? Being stupid is an understatement in the given situation. But Thomas seemed to be full of crap. You won't believe what he said next. Uh, lonely and... and, well, that was just the beginning of his rant. From one reason to another, Thomas came up with so much BS that he had lost the plot long before he even opened his mouth. You made a bad decision. Gosh, where have I heard this excuse before? But I wasn't going to do it. You weren't going to do anything? No. Then why did you come here, Tom? Oh, yeah? So that's what you're going with now? But Chris wasn't the least bit affected. I mean, he's heard so many versions of these excuses that I don't think anything surprises him anymore. You know, I was lonely. I wasn't going to do anything. You weren't going to do anything? No. You're just going to come over here and read her a bedtime story? <laughs> no. Yeah, talk about a savage comeback. I mean, leave it to Chris to make these cases all the more interesting. It's very specific about what you want to do with this girl who you believe to be 15. Sexual acts. You know what I'm talking about. I do. What am I to make of this? I'm hoping you believe me, that I wouldn't do anything. But uh, explain to me... It was this flirtation? ...why I should believe you. Clearly, he was having difficulty understanding the gravity of what he had done. I was, I was just gonna stop him. It's funny how Thomas really thought keeping a straight face and answering to the point would keep him out of the trouble that he dug for himself. Do you see why I have a hard time believing that? <laughs> I'm sure you do. I'm sure you do, but I'm honest. But the whole thing took a turn when Thomas revealed something crazy. Are you married? My wife passed away a year ago. I'm sorry to hear that. Oh no, too late for that realization, Thomas. You're also ready neck deep in trouble and there's no way out of this. Oh my God. I've never done anything like this before. I was just lonely, horny, I got, I don't know. You see, being lonely wasn't the best excuse especially when it comes to hooking up with someone so young. I mean, what are support groups for? Thomas probably never even heard of them. But, well, he knew just the thing to do. He used the same trick as Dylan. What do you think should happen? And as soon as the cameras came out, the whole situation got even worse. Well, maybe it's better to suck it all up and accept your fate, because there is no way back from here. No other explanation you want to give? Now, Chris decided to give Thomas all the time he wanted to explain himself. But Thomas seemed to be at a loss for words. Right there for 
Thomas wasn't the one to resist, but he did look like he was being pushed over the edge. Honestly, Thomas might be the first guy who was willing to accept that what he did was wrong and get arrested without making it a big issue. Now, I do really feel bad for him because he lost his wife and he's also a single father and all that, but none of that justifies what he was here to do. Now, aside from the whole crying act, I actually expected Thomas to blow up, but he surprisingly remained calm throughout the confrontation. What did you bring with you tonight? Just my wallet. I don't even have enough money to pay her. That's what she wanted. I wasn't gonna, I didn't have money to pay her. But here's the problem, Tom. If you weren't gonna do anything, why even mess with it in the first place? Why even pop it? Was flirtation. Flirtation. Flirtation is for online and teasing. That's kind of what I want. Showing I up. Asking her. <clears throat> showing up is more than flirtation. That's why I didn't lie. I just wanted her to show me. And given the situation, with cops around the corner and cameras zooming into your face, I guess it was the wisest thing to do. So what other moments from the show would you add to the list? Make sure to let me know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to drop a like, subscribe, and turn on my post notifications.